I got a couple requests on uh, how I take uh, how I take pictures of my miniatures. I know there's lots of uh, tutorials and videos and how tos and everything about photographing miniatures, but uh, this is going to be how I photograph miniatures. Maybe you'll figure out something that's uh, worth giving a try. Maybe you'll see something that's worth avoiding. Anyway, so this is going to be about uh, how I take pictures now. I mentioned in the, I think my first video so that I, I, I previously worked for President Bush uh, taking care of his uh, all of his stuff for almost two and a half years. I was responsible for taking photographs of all the artifacts in the collection for the museum of uh, all the gifts he was given as governor of Texas and in eight years as president and the gifts he continues to get and uh, I was also I had to take pictures for like when we were setting up, the, setting up the George W. Bush Presidential Library, uh, we would have to we would select things to, to go on display in the, in the museum, and he would have to approve them. So I'd have to take photos, real nice photos, and then we'd make like a book out of it, and then it'd be presented to him, and he would pick the things and do that several times. So I had to I had to take you know good pictures, and I'm not a professional photographer. I mean, I've taken photography classes and you know from high school on. Uh, and then just as a miniatures painter just tried to learn and take the best pictures I could but as a museum technician I really had to uh, had to amp it up a bit and I had with the new presidential library opening up the, the funds were there for you know I, I was able to set up a beautiful uh, photography uh, uh, studio we uh, you know I had I could buy the best can, uh, cameras and, and, and lenses and the big fancy lighting arrangements and I bought a studio in a box for the smaller stuff and you know the backdrops and you know virtually unlimited budgets so that was easy now back here at the house in, in the Trojan Art Painting Studio uh, we don't quite have that luxury of having a, a taxpayer support uh, we do have taxpayer support but it's it's more uh, uh, voluntary so so I've, I've had to make do with uh, with a little less after getting spoiled there, but I think I've managed to uh, to to do okay uh, and figure out what I needed and what worked. Uh, so I'll just uh, I'll just uh, walk y'all through some of the stuff that how I put together my my photography right here. Of course, photography is all about lighting. I mean. You know, you, there is no color without light, because that's what that's what color is. It's light, and light you see, and and light you don't see, and light that gets reflected and absorbed off of objects. So what I use for what I use for light is just these two. I got two of these lamps like this. Now they have a solid base. This one and this one here. They have a solid base on. Don't get the don't get the clip on ones like this clip here, like I use for my magnifying lamp. Don't get that. They're they're unstable. And they're just a pain. You can't you, you can't rearrange them. These ones with a solid and heavy base, you can slide around and arrange the way you want. Um, I got them for about, I don't know, bought them a couple years ago, but I think they're $14 or $15 at Walmart. And uh, then I got this other, this little lamp for six or eight bucks that I used uh, to, in, right from right, to uh, shine the light right behind the camera, but I'll get back to that. Now you can see I put the, uh, I put the diffuser paper on here on both these. Uh, both these uh, lamps see that diffuser paper now all it is is uh y'all remember Bruce remember y'all remember Bruce there he is same place as usual hanging out and there's there's boo in there say hi boo say hi Say hi. Okay, well, anyway, yeah. There's Bruce wondering why I'm paying attention to Boo instead of him. Okay, relax, dude, as you were. Carry on. Go back to whatever you were doing. Okay, anyway, so for the uh, diffuser paper, I just used this uh, rag vellum here. I think I just got it at uh, Staples. And then for the backdrop, I either use like a, this, this white artist paper or even cheaper and larger just use this construction paper you know then you have you can you have different colors you can choose from right now I'm just using the white 
We notice I have a portable box. You can see up here in the top of my closet. I store it up there. Let me try to get it down. Well, dropping the camera. See, I just pull it right out when I need to use it. And uh, put it here in my assembly area. A lot of people make similar light boxes. This is nothing unusual, of course. All you need is some uh, uh, a glue stick gun, hot glue stick gun. You need to buy two home board boards. That's all you need. Then I bought these uh, these things here that they use for uh, stick flowers in, just to raise just to raise it up the, the the platform up a little so I could have it level with my the tripod on my camera. And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, and then I had the piece of you see I had the uh, paper in here as a backdrop. Now because sometimes you, you scratch it up and you get as you're sliding figures in and out of there, you kind of get the paper scratched up after a while. So you need to replace it every once in a while. So I don't I don't. Uh, tape it in or anything. I just fold the corners over and, and lay it in there and then it, it curves up, you know, against the backdrop there. Now the can, camera I use is right here. It's just a Canon PowerShot 3300IS. Little cheapy camera. Tripod has lasted me through about three cameras now. It's just a Canon tripod. So what I do, I just set the camera down right here. You see how I have it raised with this green floral foamy stuff just to have it where the camera is level with the platform that the figure is going to be sitting on. The camera I always put on uh, when I I put it on macro. Okay, so I select macro like that. Then I always have the flash off, and then I put it a two second delay on the self timer. You always want to use your your delay because no matter uh, no matter how still you think you're holding the camera, when you push that button down, the shutter opens and shuts. Why? You know, while you're pushing the button down, you're going to be moving that camera. The camera's going to be moving as your finger moves to push the button. So always use at least, you know, with a two second delay, you can push the button and then back off and everything's nice and still. Uh, and you're going to get a lot better results. Okay. Then I, I use, I, I set it for fluorescent lighting. Now on these lights here, when I aim them, I aim them down from above in, into the box. I aim it, I don't aim it where it's going to be pointing directly at the figure. Say, I'm going to use this guy from the previous video so you don't want it, the, the light up here point directly at the figure you want it pointing off this off this backlight uh, you want to point off this back uh, reflecting off this back side and then down okay so so it's coming down this way and then reflecting back then this other light on this side same thing you want to turn it on and uh, point it have it point turn it on and have it point across and then reflect down this way okay now I use this light here to light the figure directly just slide it over behind the camera above and behind the camera okay and that's that's what it ends up looking like and that's really all you need here's what the whole setup looks like then for my editing software again I don't do anything fancy I just use Picasa 3 that's available free from Google it's got everything I need it's easy to download and upload things to it and from it. It's got all the editing tools that I need. Okay. Me and the spousal unit. And I'll show you the program I used the just real quick. This is those are the pictures I just took recently in the for the uh, the arrows video right there. This is Picasso 3 from Google. Okay, I'll just click on click on this guy because I didn't actually use him. And uh, really, the only thing I do when I put a picture in here, I crop the picture. In this case, I just selected square right here because you can pull down and select different, pull down and select different size you want, eight by ten, five by seven, whatever. I just selected square, and then uh, just cropped him real simple. After that, I just hit I'm feeling lucky because that helps to balance the white light a little bit. And you gotta watch it. You, you can do, you go back and, and undo. I'm feeling lucky, and then do it again. I'll show you when I undo it what it looks like. See, it just dulls it a little bit, and I'll hit it again. Brings it back up. You gotta watch it though. Make sure it doesn't change your colors, because if it change your colors, um, you're gonna have to go in there and manipulate some of these other functions for color and stuff to get it back right. It also has a real good retouch tool. that's simple to use right here. Just click on retouch. I'll go back on my. It's right here. You just click on retouch. And then you can go like if you have a 
you know a dog hair sticking out or a you know a, you know a pumpkin pie crumb or cigarette ash or something you missed or a or a you know piece of grass down here on the base you can go in there and easily just crop it you know uh, retouch it right here in this program now I know other programs have the same thing but I just found this one's the simplest for me to use once you saw that's all I do I crop it and adjust the white light then then down here it automatically puts it down here uh, for export and you, you just click export here and it sends it right to a computer file export down here I don't know if you don't see that arrow where it gets right there it exports it to a computer file where you can uh, you know then use it to attach to a video or whatever or put it on for eBay pictures one if you click go back to library you can actually select all five pictures like that and it puts them down here you can export all five at the same time anyway I just I just found this this program the easiest to use and I've tried a bunch of them so I thought I'd go ahead and throw that in there I guess that'll wrap it up it's hard to do a video where you feel like you're not coming up with any you know with any useful information for people but you know the guy asked so hopefully at least he'll get something out of it anyway thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll talk to y'all again soon keep painting keep your positive attitudes bye